Please welcome Senator Dick Durbin of Illinois. Thank you. It is a singular honor to be here tonight. Eight years ago in Boston, I introduced you to a state senator from Illinois. He had a name that was hard to pronounce, and Loretta and Michelle and I stood on the side of the stage in Boston and wondered if you would accept his message about the future of this party, and you did. Four years later, four years later in Denver, I asked you to give this man our party's nomination for president, and tonight in Charlotte, I ask you to join me in giving President Barack Obama four more years to finish the job he started. I was there. I was there. Four more years. You know, Barack and I, we've been through a lot together in these four years. And we learned about one another, a lot about one another. And one of the things I learned about Barack is the enormity of his heart, and I think he learned about me, the depth of my loyalty to him. And there's another thing, another thing that has bound us together these past four years. We had a pretty good idea what all those families, all you Americans in trouble were going through, in part because our own families had gone through similar struggles. Barack, as a young man, had to sit at the end of his mother's hospital bed and watch her fight for their insurance company at the very same time she was fighting for her life. When I was a young kid in third grade, I remember my dad coming up the stairs to my grandpa's house where we were living, sitting at the end of my bed and saying, Joey, I'm going to have to leave for a while. Gone, go down to Wilmington, Delaware with Uncle Frank. The good job's down there, honey. In a little while, a little while I'll be able to send for you and Mom and Jimmy and Val, and everything's going to be fine. For the rest of our lives, my sister and my brothers, for the rest of our life, my dad never failed to remind us that a job is about a lot more than a paycheck. It's about, it's about your dignity. It's about respect. It's about your place in the community. It's about being able to look your child in the eye and say, honey, it's going to be okay and mean it. convention this year is my mom. Four years ago, my mom was still with us, sitting up in the stadium in Denver. I quoted her. I quoted her, one of her favorite expressions. She used to say to all her children, she said, Joey, bravery resides in every heart, and the time will come when it must be summoned. Ladies and gentlemen, I'm here to tell you, but I think you already know. Yep. But I watch it up close. Bravery resides in the heart of Barack Obama, and time and time again, I witnessed him summon it. This man has courage in his soul, compassion in his heart, and a spine of steel. And Oh, 
Osama bin Laden is dead and General Motors yeah, is dead. to new jobs, more opportunity, and rebuild this economy on a stronger foundation. That's what we can do in the next four years, and that is why I'm running for a second term as President of the United States. more products and outsource fewer jobs. After a decade that was defined by what we bought and borrowed, we're getting back to basics and doing what America's always done best. We are making things again. I've met workers in Detroit and Toledo who feared they'd never build another American car and today they can't build them fast enough because we reinvented a dying auto industry that's back on the top of the world. I've worked with business leaders who are bringing jobs back to America, not because our workers make less pay, but because we make better products. Because we work harder and smarter than anyone else. I signed trade agreements that are helping our companies sell more goods to millions of new customers. 
goods that are stamped with three proud words, made in America. And after a decade of decline, this country created over half a million manufacturing jobs in the last two and a half years. And now you have a choice. We can give more tax breaks to corporations that ship jobs overseas, or we can start rewarding companies that open new plants and train new workers and create new jobs here in the United States of America. We can help big factories and small businesses double their exports. And if we choose this path, we can create a million new manufacturing jobs in the next four years. You can make that happen. You can choose that future. You can choose the path where we control more of our own energy. After 30 years of inaction, we raised fuel standards so that by the middle of the next decade, cars and trucks will go twice as far on a gallon of gas. We have doubled our use of renewable energy. And thousands of Americans have jobs today building wind turbines and long-lasting batteries. In the last year alone, we cut oil imports by one million barrels a day, more than any administration in recent history. And today, the United States of America is less dependent on foreign oil than at any time in the last two decades. So now you have a choice between a strategy that reverses this progress or one that builds on it. If you reject the notion that this nation's promise is reserved for the few, your voice must be heard in this election. If you reject the notion that our government is forever beholden to the highest bidder, you need to stand up in this election. If you believe that new plants and factories can dot our landscape, that new energy can power our future, that new schools can provide ladders of opportunity to this nation of dreamers, if you believe in a country where everyone gets a fair shot and everyone does their fair share and everyone plays by the same rules, then I need you to vote this November. Yes, our path is harder, but it leads to a better place. Yes. yes, our road is longer, but we travel it together. We don't turn back. We leave no one behind. We pull each other up. We draw strength from our victories, and we learn from our mistakes. But we keep our eyes fixed on that distant horizon, knowing